Equations involving one unknown can be solved singularly. This is as all the information needed to find the unknown is contained within the equation. But when two unknowns present themselves, many solutions could be possible, and it may not be easy to find the unknowns without the use of a second equation. Solving two equations together, both of which contain the same unknowns, allows us to filter the potential solutions and find both variables. There are two basic methods of solving these simultaneous equations. These are by the substitution or by elimination methods. Let's try these methods out on a series of problems. Problem one shows two equations featuring unknowns x and y. In this instance, the substitution method offers a quick and easy solution to find both variables. We can take equations one and two without making modifications. This may sound strange, but we will see how modifying equations helps in follow-on examples. We can rework equation 1 for x by deducting y from 11. This gives us equation 3. We can then reformulate equation 2 by replacing or substituting x with 11 minus y. This gives equation 4. We know we can do this as equation 3 has told us exactly what x equals. So now equation 4 allows us to find y. So from equation 4, 11 minus 2 times y equals 5. Reworking for y gives 2 times y equals 6. So y equals 3. OK, so with the first unknown found, we now have all the information needed to find the second. In this instance, we can use equations 1, 2, or 3 to find x. Using equation 3, x can be found by deducting 3 from 11. And so x equals 8. And that's a basic solution using the substitution method. Problem 2 presents a slightly more complicated problem. This time, multiple quantities of x and y are at play. I'm going to continue with the substitution method here then go on to show the alternative elimination method later. I'm going to again list the two equations unmodified. Equation 1 is reorganised as equation 3. So then we substitute minus 2 minus 2y from equation 3 into equation 2 to get rid of x. And this forms equation 4. y can now be found. And by taking equation 4 and expanding the brackets, shows minus 12y equals 36. Reworking for y gives y as minus 3. We can now use equation 1, 2 or 3 to find x as we now know y. So x equals minus 2 minus 2 times minus 3 and x equals 4. We can also solve problem 2 using the elimination method. So here we start with the same two equations. We need to select a variable to eliminate and I'm going to pick x from equation 1 for this problem. So we need to create two identical variables across the two equations and at the moment none match so equation 1 will need to be modified. So let's modify by multiplying all equation 1 variables by 4 to create equation 3. You might be asking why I do this. We need the values of x to match across the two equations in order to eliminate it later. So for x, I need to either times all equation 1 variables by 4 or divide equation 2 variables by 4. We can then eliminate x by subtracting equation 3 from 2. Deducting x from x eliminates this variable. 8 from minus 4 is 12. And for 28, minusing a minus gives 36. Equation 4 can then be used to find y. Reworking equation 4 gives a value of minus 3 for y. 
And now finally we can go back and find x. From equation 1, x plus minus 6 equals minus 2. And by reworking, x equals 4. OK, so now we've used both substitution and elimination methods to find x and y variables. Problem 3 is a little trickier, and I'm going to try both elimination and substitution methods on this one. When faced with multiples of both unknowns across both equations, we need to find the lowest substitutable multiplier. I'm going to start by trying to align y. So by multiplying equation 1 variables by 7 to form equation 3, and equation 2 variables by 2 to form equation 4, y is balanced. Reworking equation 3 for y gives us equation 5 and a substitution formula. And by substituting 5 into 4, we create equation 6 with no y unknown. As before, we can now find x. And reworking equation 6 allows us to calculate x equaling 3. Then moving back to y, by reworking equation 5, we can see that y equals 2. OK, so now let's find x and y for problem 3 using the elimination method. We can start by multiplying the equations as seen before to balance y. And then by adding equations 3 and 4, we can eliminate y. And by forming equation 5, we can now solve for x. Reworking for x, we find that x equals 3. And finally, y can be found from equation 1. And so from equation 1, y equals 2. For problem 4, simplification is required as the unknowns present themselves as part of fractions. Focusing on equation 1, if we were to multiply both sides by 27 times x plus y, the equation is expanded as shown in equation 3. We can perform this action as long as we add to both sides. But whatever we add, it must then help us to begin the elimination process. We can eliminate variables that cancel each other out on both sides of the equation as shown. And this gives us a much more familiar looking equation to use later in the solution. Now let's perform the same action for equation 2. This time we multiply by 4. And again we eliminate which gives us a second simplified equation. So now we have equations 3 and 4 to work to a solution in the same way as in previous examples. If we multiply out the equations, 3 and 4 will look as shown. At this stage, we have the option to either eliminate or substitute. Either are valid, but I'm going to choose to use the elimination path. Adding equations 3 and 4 allows us to eliminate y, and reworking allows us to find x equaling 5. We can now find y from equation 3, and reworking gives us y equaling 1.75. OK, so that's a basic introduction to simultaneous equations. I hope you find it in some way useful.